the amazing obedience of the Gentile wise men and the children of King David, Joseph and Mary. The Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, day number 39, as we parallel the new president's 100 days, day 406 of preaching the gospel uh, since January the 1st, 2016. The amazing obedience of the wise men, Joseph and Mary. That may not sound too exciting to some of you people who uh, think that you have to get a thrill out of every message or every title uh, but I'm here to tell you after salvation obedience to God is what it is all about amen somebody if you do not mind let's stand and read God's Word as it is found in Matthew chapter 2 in the Holy Word of God, the Bible, and as you know, I'm an old-fashioned saint, uh, and so I preach from the old King James Version, Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, you could use whatever version you want to use, but you might get lost, uh, because I read and preach from the old time Bible, the old King James Version. I have some brethren who call it the King James Bible. They are so adamant about it, uh, but uh, uh, I don't go as far as that. Verse 11, and when they were come into the house, that is, uh, the wise men, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, what gifts? Gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Everybody pray earnestly and hard. We've had three days in a row where the devil has struck uh, in strange ways. So please pray with me and pray for me. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. You better listen to the Spirit of God. Some of you have some Herods in your life. You don't need to go back to them. You need to go another way. Amen, somebody. Some of you have some Herod friends. And God is telling you not to go back to them. Some of you uh, have some Herod family members. And God is telling you not to go back to them. Uh, and some of you got some Herod family members who are trying to get back to you. And God is telling you, no, don't let them back. You better listen to the Spirit of God. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child. Notice he did not have a discussion with Mary. Amen, somebody. Uh, like these Bill Cosby families we have today. Everybody got to have a family meeting before anybody could... Uh, make a move on something uh, sometimes uh, God just tells the man it's time to move it's time to do something and the wife is to submit notice that the angel 
uh, the dream came to Joseph, not Mary. This is the value of having a husband. This is why God blessed Mary with a good man, a good husband to lead her when folk try to come to kill the baby. Amen, somebody. <laughs> uh, so some of you mighty women who think you can do everything by yourself, you have learned the hard way that that is not the case. You cannot, uh, there's a whole, the whole thing going on today about telling young, telling young women, you can have it all now. Yeah, you might be able to have it all, but you can't do it all uh, by yourself. You need a man in your life to help you along the way. We thank God for the Josephs of the world. Amen, somebody. Don't get mad at me, you ER lady, ERA ladies. Don't get mad at me, you independent women who think you can do everything by yourself until you get to the point where you can't. Thank God for Joseph. When he arose after having that dream, he took the young child. He didn't do any pillow talk with Mary like most men do today when God tells them to do something. And by the, by the time that woman gets through with their mind, uh, whatever God told them to do, they have forgotten all about it. And they get up in the morning and go their little merry devilish way having had that pillow talk with mama mm, so many churches have been hindered by deacons who listen to mama instead of to the leadership that God has laid down in the church they are henpecked controlled and as I've said for 30 some years and dominated by their wives and, and yet they still don't understand these weak men that uh, their wife wants to follow them. She still, no matter how much she kicks up and bucks and fights, she wants you to be the man in lead. You say, preacher, why are you preaching on this? Because God is telling me to do so. I know it's making you mad. Some of you are signing off right now. Don't you go anywhere. Don't you touch that device. You listen to me and you listen to me well. Uh, I can help you before you go home today. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Here's another nighttime deal. We all remember the Nicodemus uh, situation by night. And uh, you know when you're leaving by night, there's something wrong. There's something, something is afoot against you uh, and so Joseph listened to the word of God and protected the son of God we have no record of him discussing it with Mary he just got the baby and Mary said we got to get it in the words of my dad I got to get my hat well, where are we going don't worry about it I got the word from the Lord we're going to Egypt. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there. And if uh, Mary, and some of you are not going to like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. If Mary was anything like my wife, Mary, spelled with the M E R I, she would have been huffing and puffing on that donkey all the way down to Egypt. <laughs> Mad as hell at me. We just moved. We just we just did this. I just had a baby. And uh, now you got me on another donkey. And uh, I'm going <laughs> huffing and puffing. But thank God this Mary, M-A-R-Y, was not like my Mary, M-A-R-E-R-I. Thank you, Lord, for the humble Mary. We, 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 hear, we see nothing about Mary going contrary towards her husband. And we see nothing about Mary talking back and raising questions like Sarai did back in the Old Testament. Uh, thank God for Mary. 
Mary said, you got to get it? Okay, we got to get it then. Let's get it. Find the donkey. Let's go. Verse 15, and was there until the death of Herod. Herod had to die because he thought he was the king of the Jews, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Out of Egypt have I called my son, the son of God. His name is Jesus. Amen, somebody. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your goodness your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we honor him the best way that we can today. And the truth of the matter is, Lord, we don't even know how to honor him as we should. We praise you and we thank you uh, for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you and we praise you for your Holy Spirit and your Holy Word. And for the millions and manifold blessings that you have bestowed upon each of us. Those of us who are your children through Christ. To help us to confess our sins. To pray, to repent of our sins, to turn from our wicked ways and to humble ourselves. Lord, restore us again, renew us again, and revive us again as Christians. Help us to get excited about your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, and his second coming and help us to live accordingly. And Lord God in heaven, we pray for millions to hear the gospel and to be saved through this ministry and other ministries. And we pray for uh, millions of Christians to get their hearts right with you and to come back to you. And we pray that your holy name will be glorified and Jesus Christ lifted up and Satan horrified at the preaching of your life-changing gospel in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenneth La Tourette said one of the most amazing and significant facts of history is that within five centuries of his birth Christianity won the professed allegiance of the overwhelming majority of the Roman Empire and even the support of the Roman state. Beginning as a seemingly obscure sect of Judaism, one of the scores even hundreds of religions and uh, religious groups which were competing within the realm, revering as its central figure one who had been put to death by the machinery of Rome. End of quote. Beloved, after the wise men met Jesus, they received a message from God in a dream telling them not to go back to Herod, of course, as Herod asked, with the news that they had found the new king, the king of the Jews, the child Jesus. They didn't listen to Herod. <clears throat> They didn't obey Herod, rather. They obeyed this message and returned to their own land by another way. The obedience of the pagan astrologers, if you will, to the divine evidence is yet more evidence, or the divine vision, the divine message is yet more evidence that they understood that they were not dealing just with the arrival of human royalty, but with the long-awaited bursting forth of divinity upon mankind. 
And when we talk about human royalty, we're talking about Queen Elizabeth. And we're talking about her family. That's just human royalty. King James and King Henry. Uh, but this is different. Uh, this young child is none other than God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Queen Elizabeth bows down to this king, amen, somebody. <laughs> Bless her heart. Charles got to bow down. Prince Charles got to bow down to this king. For he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And so, beloved, previously the wise men were beholden to human rulers, including Herod, in their passage and on their journey. But now that Jesus had arrived, they recognized immediately that a higher authority was in control and that this higher authority was working in the earth to bring about his will. A greater than the greatest king ever, a greater than Solomon is here. Solomon was somebody. But a greater than Solomon was here now. His name is Jesus. The wise men knew that they owed their allegiance to him and not to the fake king of the Jews, Herod, but the real king of the Jews, Jesus, amen, somebody. Everyone who met Jesus during his earthly ministry was confronted with the same awesome reality. Everyone had to pay allegiance to the secular Roman government or to the religious establishment. But Jesus claimed authority that was even higher than that. People had to decide if they would turn their allegiance to Jesus or continue following earthly authorities. Craig S. Keener said that the Magi needed a supernatural revelation to warn them not to return by way of Jerusalem suggests their innocent naivete. Even without Herod's unadmirable character, few kings would be ready to surrender their own rule to a non-relative some foreigners held as king. For that matter, not only powerful people in society, but many others today seem reluctant to acknowledge Jesus' right to direct their lives. The Magi's innocence, compared to Herod's murderous shrewdness, again reminds Matthew's readers not to prejudge the appropriate recipients of the gospel. Jesus is for all who will receive him. And God may provide Jesus' servants with allies in unexpected places if we have the wisdom to recognize them, end of quote. Amen, somebody. The wise men, however, were not the only ones who received a warning from God on the night of their visit to the house of the child Jesus. Notice with me not only the amazing obedience of these Gentile uh, wise men, but notice with me also the amazing obedience of Joseph and Mary. I've already touched on Mary and her obedience not only to God but to her husband Joseph, who she knew was a stepfather figure. And let me say here, beloved, a shout out or give a shout out to the good, godly stepfathers of this world. We thank God for the good, godly stepfathers of this world. I don't have much experience with it. I thank God that my father 
Daniel White Jr. stayed with the family, even though many times he could have left. But I do have a step-grandfather. In fact, the only grandfather I know. He loved me like I was his own. I really didn't know my grandfather on my mother's side or my father's side. But my grandmother married a gentleman, the last gentleman. His name was Henry Beeman. I don't know what family he comes from. I don't know what town he was raised in. I don't know much about him, but he's the only grandfather I ever knew. And he would wake me up when he got off work and roast some peanuts in the oven. I don't know if you all, if you folks remember those days when we had to roast the peanuts in the oven. I thank God for Popsy. That's what we called him. Popsy. Uh, he was my grandfather. He stepped in and raised the grandchildren and loved the grandchildren that uh, the grandfather that was living did not do. And the other grandfather had died before I was born. So thank God today for those good, godly stepfathers and stepmothers who have stood in the gap and chose not to abuse the children, chose not to molest the children, uh, but treated them as their own. I know I have a popsy in my life, and I hope that you can say the same about the stepfather or stepmother in your life. Thank God for the Josephs of the world. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> and so be that as it may, Joseph also received a warning that Herod would seek to destroy, to kill the young child Jesus. And when you think long and hard about this, and we don't have time to dwell on this today, but if you think about this, this is deep. You can spend a whole month studying just this passage right here. The angel of the Lord told Jesus' earthly parents to take him to Egypt in order to avoid the coming bloodbath. God could have protected his son through, if you will, supernatural means, and yet we know that this message was supernatural. But what we're talking about... Uh, is God, if he wanted to, could have destroyed Herod and his army <clears throat> as they were approaching Jesus' house. But it is interesting that he chose to use human means, if you will, sending the child Jesus, the Son of God, to Egypt would have put him out of Herod's jurisdiction. For example, just as if you were in a situation uh, and you crossed the Mexican border or the Canadian border, you would be out of the jurisdiction of the authorities in America, for the most part, depending on why you're going across the border. It would have also fulfilled Hosea's prophecy that the Messiah would be called out of Egypt. The amazing, the amazing obedience of the wise men and of the son, the children of David, Joseph and Mary, is an example for us today, beloved. Notice how Joseph did not question God and the message that God sent, and notice how Mary did not question Joseph. If we had more of that in our Christian homes today, we might get somewhere. Amen, somebody. See, your problem 
And my problem today is that we don't obey God. We have our own ideas as to what we want to do. I'm talking to saved people. The greatest lesson you'll ever learn after you are truly saved and born again is obedience to God. And God is going to do everything he can to help you to understand that. We may not understand the mysterious ways in which God chooses to work and how he leads, but we ought to choose to obey God and his word nevertheless. Amen, somebody. Someone said the other day that uh, understanding is not that important when it comes down to obeying God. Uh, it's, best to under, it's best to obey God and then understand later. Amen, somebody. Uh, don't question God's word. Just do what the word of God tells you to do. And you can sit around talking about, I don't understand all you want to. You need to move and be obedient first and understand later. The wise men also faced a choice whether to continue with their allegiance to earthly kings or to shift their allegiance to the king of kings whom God had revealed to them in the child Jesus. The eyes and minds of these pagans had been opened to the truth via the little that they had learned about Jesus. Our minds possess an even greater enlightenment regarding who God is through the complete revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the question for you today, my beloved, is will you obey as the wise men did? Will you obey as Joseph and Mary did? Will we obey as Christians? Will we obey God? For that is truly the question. Vincent Uher the third describes the escape of Jesus into Egypt in verse thusly. Lonely travelers from the stable out beneath the hard blue sky, journeying, wandering, hoping, praying, for the safety of their child while our mother Rachel's weeping fills the streets of Bethlehem. Warned by angels moved to save him who was born our kind to save, Joseph leads his holy family far from Herod and harm's way. Mary shielding and consoling Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Fleeing from the land of promise, they in Egypt find a home strange the workings of God's mercy. House of bondage, now God's throne, but for sons who all were murdered, sorrow breaks the house of bread. True the tale of flight and exile out of Egypt comes God's son. Angel tale of Herod's dying. All is ended, all begun. Jesus will grow up a Nazarene and his sacrifice the world will see for you and for me. Amen, somebody. Beloved God may sure to preserve his holy and only son, Jesus Christ, his life so that he could die as a sacrifice willingly and freely in order to have, uh, in order to save your soul from sin and hell. And so here is how you can take advantage of his sacrifice today by believing in him. First, accept the fact, dear friend, that you are a sinner, 
That's why Jesus came and died for your sins. Uh, and died for you. is Because you're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We all are sinners. From the Pope on down. From Billy Graham on down. We're all sinners. No matter how righteous we think we are. We have all broken God's commandments. The Bible says in Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, except the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We die physically because of sin. Yes, whether you want to accept it or not, you are headed towards the grave. Your body is headed towards the grave. Your soul is on its way to hell if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as Savior. That's why Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than any prophet in the Bible. He said very clearly in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You say, preacher, I, I'm committing adultery. I'm committing fornication. I'm getting drunk. And I'm uh, rebellious towards my parents. If you have never trusted Christ as Savior, you're on your way to hell. You can keep on doing what you want to do. Just understand that when you die, your soul will spend eternity in hell. That's why you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid for all of your sins. He paid your sin debt. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. All of our sins. That's why Jesus is so wonderful. Now hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you straight from the same Jesus. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All you have to do is believe on Christ. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will save your soul from sin and hell. And just believe in your heart, dear friend, that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God on the third day. And salvation is very simple. You don't have to join a church. You don't have to participate in the right hand of fellowship. You don't have to shake the preacher's hand. You don't have to jump and shout and run around the church to be saved. And I thought we had to do all of that. Speaking in tongues to be saved. You don't have to speak in tongues to be saved. You can speak English and still be saved. All you have to do is put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray and ask him to save your soul and to come into your heart. And he'll do it today. For Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou, that of you shall confess. Put your name there. That if Bill shall confess with Bill's mouth the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in Bill's heart that God have raised Bill. Uh, <laughs> that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Getting a little bit carried away there. Thou shalt be saved. You know you've never been raised from the dead, so. For whosoever, for if Bill shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Bill shall be saved. If you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead, and you want to trust him today as your Savior, here's your opportunity. I will lead you in what is commonly called the sinner's prayer so that you can be saved from sin and hell. Believing in your heart and nobody else, not the church, not a preacher, not your mama, not your daddy, but Jesus, Jesus alone. Follow me in prayer right now. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And that I have done wrong in my life. I have broken your commandments. And I understand from your holy word. That I deserve hell. 
For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy upon me, a sinner, and forgive me of all of my sins past. Forgive me of all of my sins, as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that he died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you for the rest of my life. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving my wretched soul. Wash and cleanse me in the precious blood of Christ and make me whiter than snow on the inside. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Now my beloved, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, you believed that he died on the cross for your sins as the Lamb of God to take away your sins forever, that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day and he's living at the right hand of God right now. May I say to you, dear friend, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. If you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you immediately. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Dear friend, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you. Until next time.